Hey guys, today we're going to look at why you would want to reset your security cameras and four methods to reset these cameras here. There are numerous reasons why you would reset your security camera. The cameras I have here today are from Hikvision, but this is not an ad from them. I like their cameras. I've been experimenting with some other brands, but today I'm going to be resetting the Turret Dome Mini PTZ and the Cube camera. I'll be plugging them directly into my PoE switch, which will be plugged into my network. If you're using a dedicated NVR, like the one from a kit, you may need to plug your cameras directly into your router for some of these examples. You will need a PoE switch or an adapter to power the cameras. Number one, config file reset. This is where you would reset your camera back to a previously saved setup. To do this, you would have to have already saved your camera's configuration to a file. It's kind of like setting a restore point on your computer, but this saves the individual camera settings to the file. It's a good idea to do this regularly, just in case you have to do a full reset on your camera. This way you don't need to spend time trying to remember what the setup was, the IP address, ports, overlays, time zones, etc. I found this helpful when I was experimenting with some of my cameras and I need to go back to a previously saved setup. It was easy to create that restore point, reload it, and then I was back to where I started. Creating a restore point could also be helpful if you're setting up multiple cameras with, the sim with similar setup. Save the configuration at a common point that would apply to all of your cameras and save yourself some time by re-importing those settings onto each of the individual, individual cameras. Remember though that a config file will not work across models. So if I have a file from my PTZ camera, it won't work on the, any of the other models. If you have a dedicated NVR kit from Hikvision, you might be able to export the camera's configuration by going to the NVR menus for exporting. Here on my PC, I want to use Internet Explorer in this example, so you should run it as administrator. If you don't, you will not be able to see the files in Windows Explorer. To log into the Cube camera, I need to know its IP address, which can be found in the Hikvision SADP Tools application. Enter the credentials and navigate to the Basic Configuration System and Maintenance tab. Click on the Export button to start creating your restore point. Name the file with the date so you know which one is the most recent, and even add the type of camera or the location of the camera. In case you need to move cameras around, you will always have the right setup for a particular area. So now that the file is saved, let's go find it in Windows Explorer. If you prefer the IBMS 4200 tool, you would click on the Export Configuration file under System Maintenance. Let's test this out by changing the camera's name and updating the frame rate and quality of the picture. Let's go back to the maintenance screen where we can import the file to reset this camera. Once you confirm that the camera will reboot afterwards, it will drop off SADP as the reboot occurs. Once it's back up and running, it will reappear on SADP and I'll log in here and make sure the settings are back to my previously saved configuration. Number two, reset all except IP address and user settings. You would use this reset if you don't want to start over from scratch, but you do need to reset your camera to clear out some information that you may have put in there. So let's say you messed up the settings and you can't remember what the default values are. You click this button and the user interface and the camera will reset back to its original state, but the IP address that you have entered and the credentials that you have set up will remain in place. It will reset the port settings except the server port, so keep this in mind when you're trying to access your camera after doing this. I use this feature a lot when I'm experimenting with certain features. I want to make sure all settings are cleared out so I, they, you don't interfere with my next experiment. Let's do a quick demo. So let's say you mess things up in the image settings because they do an autosave and you can't get the picture to look normal again. If you don't have a restore point, you can reset the camera back to the defaults with the exception of the major setup items like the IP address and the users. On the maintenance page, click on restore and then confirm. The camera will disappear from SADP where the HTTP port for accessing the web interface was an ID6. When it comes back, it'll be 80, which is the default for all websites. And as you can see, the camera is still active in SADP. In the address bar, let's remove the port 96 from its IP address of this mini PTZ camera. And now you have access to a reset camera. And now you can proceed with your next setting experiment. Number three, soft reset all. Here you will be on the same page using Internet Explorer, but you will use the default button. This one will reset the camera back to defaults, including the IP address and the user credentials. 
you will need to reactivate the camera again if it comes with that feature. Once your camera reboots, you may not see it at the same IP address. It will change back to the default one, so that means that your NVR may not be able to see it, and the credentials will be wrong. So you will have to reprogram all of that information back into your camera in order to access it again. So why would you want to do this? If you're experiencing technical issues, you updated your settings and you need it to start over, your camera is hacked, or if you're buying or selling your camera, you may want to do a major reset so that all those settings are cleared out. On the system maintenance page, click on the default button and confirm. Your camera will be wiped of all the settings and then reboot it. Again, it will disappear from SADP and come back with a new IP address. If your camera has the feature where it needs to be activated, you will also see that in SADP. So let's go ahead and reactivate this turret camera. Now I will update the IP address, port, and the gateway, which is my router's IP address, and then password and submit. So now when I log back in, everything is back to the way it was when I first purchased the camera. So if this soft reset doesn't work, you may need to try the hard reset if your camera has a reset button. Number four, hard reset all. This is where you push a button on the camera, turn on the power, and reset the camera back to original factory settings. It's a quick reset and a last resort fix. If you cannot access your camera through the software, cannot find your camera on your network, or don't want to use the soft reset all, you could use this method if your system was hacked, or if you're buying and selling a new unit, or if you just want to reset everything back to the way it was originally. It's a quick way of resetting the camera, and no need to try to remember passwords, IP addresses, ports, or where the soft reset is located. Simply press the button, plug in the camera using your adapter or PoE, and then wait 20 seconds and the camera is reset. Again, the camera will need to be reactivated and the IP addresses and the passwords have all changed back to default settings. So we'll start off with the cube camera. Basically, you want to push in on that little reset button there on the back. And then while doing so, plug your camera into its power source, which in my case is PoE. And then hold the button down. Hold down the button for about 20 seconds and you'll notice that the camera will disappear from SADP and shortly reappear with the default IP address. To do the reset on the dome camera, you're going to have to open it up. So as you can see, there's no reset button on the inside of this older style dome camera. Let's have a look at the mini PTZ and the reset button in there looks identical to the reset button in the newer style of the dome cameras. So to do the camera reset, simply push on the button and plug in your power. So lastly, we're going to look at the turret camera. This one needs to be opened in order to gain access to the reset button. Standard Phillips screwdriver. So there's no obvious sign of the reset button. So let's have a look under this uh, chipboard and see if it's located underneath that. I did some more digging into that turret camera, but like my old dome camera, there was no reset button. It's disappointing that these models didn't have such a feature. In any case, the examples I showed today were all performed from all of these cameras because they all share a common user web interface. So thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and back up your configuration files.